healing when god forgave us in christ jesus he came down and forgave us god became man he emptied himself that is what it is written in philippians chapter 2 and verse number 5 on was let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus who being in the form of god who being in the form of god did not consider it robbery to equal with god but made himself of no reputation taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as man he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even the death of the cross god came down god became a man to forgive us to save us he being in the form of god did not consider it robbery to equal with god that level of forgiveness that kind of forgiveness we have received from god god forgave us in christ jesus and he paid a great price for that he became man and thus he forgave us he died on the cross of calvary and on the cross he declared i forgive you i forgive mankind on the cross while he declared the statement of forgiveness in luke chapter 23 and verse number 34 father forgive them for they do not know what they do that declaration is a declaration of forgiveness for mankind god became man he came down and forgave mankind many times we judge others when we see shortcomings and failures in their life we judge others in our heart do not do that you have no right or we have no right to judge others in john chapter 8 we see a woman who was caught in adultery was brought before jesus christ and they were ready to throw stones on this lady and jesus asked a question to them in verse number 7 he who is without sin among you let him throw a stone at her first he who is without sin among you let him throw a stone at her first remember when we judge others we should remember this question He who is without sin among you let him throw a stone at her first and when Jesus asked this question it is written in verse number 9 then those who heard it being convicted by their conscience went out one by one beginning with the oldest even to the last and Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst everyone who accused and judged this woman now they went out from that place because they were convicted in their conscience and the true judge they had no right to judge this woman because the true judge is jesus christ he is the only judge in this universe he only has the right to judge and the true judge looked at that lady in verse number 10 and he said woman where are those accusers of yours has no one condemned you she said no one lord and jesus said to her neither do i condemn you go and sin no more you see the judgment of jesus christ jesus said i forgive you neither do i condemn you that is forgiveness oh hallelujah and jesus 
also told her sin no more we have no right to judge others when we are offended because of the actions of others let's forgive them let's live in forgiveness many times people were unable to forgive others completely though they made decision to forgive others in practical they are unable to forgive them completely in the old testament we see the example of david at his death bed he was still carrying bitterness revenge many such um, unpleasant emotions were there in david's last moments in first kings chapter 2 and was 5 he was uh, talking to his son solomon about joab and in verse number 6 he was telling to solomon therefore do according to your wisdom and do not let his gray hair go down to the grave in peace what is the meaning kill him you have wisdom so it is your responsibility to punish him that was a terrible death bed keeping all this unforgiveness revenge and with that he was on his death bed and he was telling the next generation or passing on to the next generation all his bitterness revenge and other unpleasant things in verse number 8 he spoke about shimei and verse number 9 now therefore do not hold him guiltless for you are wise telling his son solomon you are wise and um, know what you ought to do to him but bring his gray hair down to the grave with blood what is the meaning kill him of course these people shimei and joab both were wicked very wicked but look the death bed of david keeping all this revenge bitterness very sad many people they are on their death bed with such pains regrets unforgiveness revenge many such unpleasant emotions were tormenting them and especially unforgiveness they were unable to forgive others completely many made decision that they are forgiving others but unable to practice it on a daily basis and also unable to forgive others completely remember when something happens to your enemies don't rejoice in it some terrible things if it happens to your enemies don't rejoice because of such incidents go with me to proverbs chapter 17 and verse number 5 he who mocks the poor reproaches his maker he who is glad see this he who is glad at calamity will not go unpunished when you see the calamity of your enemy and if you are glad it will have consequences and again go with me to proverbs chapter 24 and verse number 17 do not rejoice when your enemy falls oh underline this verse do not rejoice when your enemy falls and do not let your heart be glad when he stumbles when you see your enemy falls do not rejoice don't feel good in your heart when he stumbles we need to forgive others completely 
and we need the help of the holy spirit if you ask the holy spirit to help you he will impart his love and we will be able to forgive others completely i just want to explain this principle by a story in a foreign nation there was a pastor whose son became a lover of the world and he left the home he became friends of hippies and moved with them father went behind him but father couldn't find him that pastor lost his son he searched for him everywhere but he couldn't find him and after many months uh, while he was in another city to preach the word of god the local pastor in that city told this pastor as he lost your son just go to the um, s- central stadium in the city the other day i found s- few young hippies there in that central stadium and they are sleeping during night time they are sleeping in that stadium in that ground this pastor who lost his son that evening after the meeting he went to that ground and he found all those hippies sleeping in that ground so he walked among them silently calmly and finally he found his son sleeping with those hippies this father was not shouting loudly or calling the police or telling other friends to come and help him no he just went near that son kneeled down near him and he prayed his son was sleeping he kneeled down this pastor kneeled down and prayed for his son while he was praying he was crying tears fell down after some time he left that place he was not creating any commotion there or he was not calling the son to come back to his home he just forgave him and prayed for him and then he returned to his hometown after few days one fine morning somebody was knocking at his door this pastor went and opened the door and found his son standing in front of his house and the son started crying and came near his father and hugged his father and told his father please forgive me the pastor's son returned home the lost son returned home that son told his father father that night when you came near me in that ground when you were praying actually that time i was not fell asleep i was just um, lying down there with closed eyes but i felt water falling on me and i thought that it was raining and i opened my eyes and saw you and you were crying and you were praying for me and that prayer brought me back so oh, you see the power of prayer power of forgiveness hallelujah glory to jesus hallelujah in first corinthians chapter 12 and verse number 31 but earnestly desire the best gifts and it i show you a more excellent way we will discuss about this more excellent way tomorrow that is written in chapter number 13 and that is the way of forgiveness that is the way of love if you want to practice forgiveness 
in day to day life we need um, god's love god is promising us to give his love his eternal love so that when we are filled with the love of god we will be able to forgive others we will be able to implement forgiveness in practical life paul the apostle is speaking about love god's love in first corinthians chapter 13 and in chapter 12 in verse number 31 he starts speaking about love but i honestly desire the best gifts and it i show you a more excellent way more excellent way what is that more excellent way what is that best gifts that is explained in first corinthians chapter 13 the greatest gift of god is his love he wants to fill all of us with his love and when we receive that great love that greatest gift god's love we will be able to forgive all others in verse number 4 love suffers long love suffers long if someone is offending us if someone is accusing us we'll able to receive patience from god because love suffers long and is kind love does not envy love does not parade itself is not puffed up does not behave rudely does not seek its own is not provoked thinks no evil does not rejoice in iniquity but rejoices in the truth bears all things believes all things hopes all things endures all things so in this chapter when we read about god's love just notice these uh, statements love suffers long related with forgiveness love thinks no evil related with forgiveness only those people who live in forgiveness can practice this in their personal life and only those who received god's love and in feeling of god's love can practice this in their personal life and endures all things related with forgiveness if you receive this anointing of baptism with love you will be able to forgive all endures all things things no evil does not rejoice in iniquity and that is what we need in this season when we receive the baptism with love with god's love we will be able to forgive all we always hear about fire baptism what is the meaning of fire baptism in a divine way when we think about fire in a natural way we know about fire it produces heat and it's natural fire but divine fire is made of love of god it is the manifestation of love of god those who have received the baptism with love will be able to practice forgiveness in their personal life they will be able to forgive others and also they will consider that if someone is offending them or if someone is causing some trouble to them they will consider that as an opportunity to forgive they will not keep those offenses in their heart but they will consider that opportunity as a fantastic opportunity to practice forgiveness that should be their response if they have received the baptism in love in second corinthians chapter 2 we see paul practicing this in his ministry when he was grieved by someone's action he decided to forgive that person 
in verse number 7 so that on the contrary you ought rather to forgive and comfort him is asking the church of corinth to forgive that person you ought rather to forgive and comfort him because paul has already decided to forgive him verse number 10 now whom you forgive anything i also forgive this man we don't know who is this man and also what he did against paul but paul rebuked him and after that he is making a decision to forgive that person now whom you forgive anything i also forgive for if indeed i have forgiven anything i have forgiven that one for your sakes in the presence of christ and what is the reason the reason is also explained in verse number 11 lest satan should take advantage of us for we are not ignorant of his devices lest satan should take advantage of us what is the meaning if we keep unforgiveness in us satan will take advantage of us he don't have any weapon with him because he is disarmed on the cross of calvary if you are a child of god against you he don't have any weapons but you can give him weapons like if you keep unforgiveness that becomes a weapon for him to use against you and against the other person paul here writes i have decided to forgive that person lest satan should take advantage of us this morning make a decision in your heart to forgive all others i just want to share an incident some years ago when i returned home after a long uh, preaching travel i told my wife tomorrow we will go together to a particular place and preach the word of god and that morning i told her get ready at 10 o'clock she went to the local church to teach the sunday school children and returned late i was waiting for my wife at uh, 10 o'clock 10:15 10:20 she uh, shouldn't uh, turned up so i decided to go and on my way when i started my vehicle uh, on my way i saw after maybe 50 meters i saw my wife coming on her scooter but i was not willing to stop i just continued um, going to that place and uh, on my way only I thought about forgiveness and I understood that I failed after f- finishing my responsibility uh, while I was returning home I thought uh, maybe my wife was seriously offended and she may respond negatively but when I reached home I saw her with great joy she uh, received me with great joy and doing things for me with great joy and i asked her do you have no offense this morning i was not willing to wait for you do you have no offense she said no i got one more opportunity to f- practice my forgiveness and forgiveness is a sign of inner wounds those who are unable to forgive others that shows that something is wrong in their mind there are wounds in their mind when offenses come against and because of offenses if one person is not able to forgive another person that is a proof of inner wounds and those who are truly in Christ will be able to forgive others because that is the nature of Jesus Christ that is the message of bible because bible is the book of forgiveness and that shows that eternity is in you you are prepared for eternal life those who are truly preparing for eternity they will be able to forgive others forgiveness is a decision when we make that decision holy spirit will bless us with the anointing of love and when we receive that anointing of love we will be able to forgive all
But on the other hand, many are keeping roots of bitterness in their heart. Root of bitterness springing up cause trouble. Root of bitterness is unforgiveness. Unforgiveness produces bitterness. Unforgiveness produces revenge. Unforgiveness produces envy. So many other things. unpleasant emotions are product of unforgiveness but when you decide to forgive another person you will be blessed in luke chapter 23 when jesus was on the cross of calvary he was rejected by all prior to the crucifixion of jesus christ when he was examined in the courts no judge was able to condemn him he was not guilty yet he was condemned as a criminal he became a sacrifice on the cross and he was condemned like a criminal he was rejected by all he became alone on the cross of calvary no one close to him was near him and on the cross in luke chapter 23 and verse number 34 he cried father forgive them for they do not know what they do amazing prayer prayer of forgiveness no one can pray such a prayer in such a situation only jesus can pray that prayer and that prayer was a prayer of forgiveness a declaration of forgiveness to humanity and what was the result we see in mark chapter 16 and verse number 6 on the third day when his body was kept in a tomb on the third day when um, Dear sisters came near the tomb of Jesus Christ. An angel was telling those sisters, Do not be alarmed, in verse number 6, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. My dear precious people, if you forgive, you will be risen. A resurrection power will manifest on you. while you are on this earth if you are shattered by many troubles in your life if you are a person living in forgiveness i want to tell you you will be resurrected nothing can destroy your life nothing can destroy your life you will be resurrected the resurrection anointing resurrection power will be manifested in those people who live in forgiveness another sign of inner wound is envy envy and jealousy envy is a painful awareness of another's advantage when another person is blessed it brings pain it brings unhappiness all men are born with envy and jealousy but in some envy and jealousy dominates and because of envy and jealousy they act against others they speak against others and they think against others then envy is in operation but on the other hand a child of god can have complete victory over envy and jealousy with the power of the holy spirit in james chapter 3 and verse number 14 but if you have bitter envy bitter envy notice this bitter envy if you have bitter envy and self seeking in your hearts do not boast and lie against the truth This wisdom does not descend from above but is earthly envy is earthly sensual demonic envy and jealousy they are earthly sensual demonic a demon is operating behind envy a demon is operating behind jealousy for a child of god with the power of the holy spirit they can defeat envy and jealousy in proverbs chapter 23 and verse number 6 do not eat the bread of a miser that means one who has an evil eye 
that is related with envy and jealousy do not eat the bread of a miser nor desire his delicacies in uh, the gospel according to john chapter number 21 we see an incident when um, jesus said about peter in verse number 18 most assuredly i say to you when you were younger you greeted yourself and walked where you wished but when you are old you will stretch out your hands and another will greet you and carry you where you do not wish so this is about peter's future this he spoke signifying by what death peter would glorify god so when jesus spoke about peter about his future about his death what was the response of peter peter wanted to know about the future of john there you see envy and jealousy in verse number 20 then peter turning around so the disciple whom jesus loved following that is john who wrote this gospel who also had leaned on his breast at the supper and said lord who is the one who betrays you peter seeing him peter seeing john and said to jesus but lord what about this man so that is the nature of all we want to know about others when we hear about us we want to know about others and this is because of envy and jealousy the reply of jesus is a medicine for envy and jealousy jesus replied if i will that he remain till i come what is that to you you follow me don't be concerned about what god choose to do with someone else you follow god you do your responsibility do not be concerned about others progress others blessings others material prosperity what is your responsibility do it faithfully and what is the reward for you from god receive it and lead a peaceful and quiet life on this earth get rid of envy and jealousy bring it under your feet by the power of the holy spirit many are internally struggling because of short temper they have no control over their temper anger is creating emotional disturbances in them in ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 26 and 27 paul speaks about anger he says be angry and do not sin do not let the sun go down on your wrath nor give place to the devil if one person keeps his anger and if it becomes a wrath he gives place to the devil a foothold devil will get a foothold in him we have different emotions healthy emotions are there unhealthy emotions are there anger is also part of the human emotional system emotional center have different emotions like joy love fear anger is also part of human emotions but when a person loses his control then anger becomes a serious struggle and it can destroy relationships husband and wife if husband is angry or wife gets angry often it can cause damage in their relationship many relationships are broken 
because of short temper no control over anger in genesis chapter 4 and verse number 5 we see cain getting angry with god when god was not respecting cain in verse number 5 but he did not respect cain and his offering and cain was very angry oh it is written here he was very angry and his countenance fell god asked him why are you angry and finally what was the result we see in verse number 8 now cain talked with abel his brother and let it came to pass when they were in the field that cain rose up against abel his brother and killed him it ended up in murder cain killed abel many fightings divisions including murder is caused by anger the root problem is anger in uh, exodus chapter 32 and verse number 19 we see the example of moses when moses was on the sinai mountain god gave two tablets 10 commandments and when moses was coming down to the valley carrying those tablets he came to know about the backsliding of the people of israel was number 19 so it was as soon as he came near the camp that he saw the calf and the dancing so moses anger became hot and he cast the tablets out of his hands and broke them at the foot of the mountain oh very sad very sad because of anger he broke those tablets this is what is happening in the lives of many people they are breaking many good things because of anger material things are broken relationships are broken future is broken financial status is broken destroying many things if you come closer to jesus he is the one who will help us to come out of such unpleasant unhealthy emotions and we can lead a peaceful and quiet life to glorify the name of jesus many are struggling with their short temper anger but they are unable to deal with their anger problem they don't know how to deal with their anger problem this morning few suggestions to control your anger first of all let's read this verse from psalms chapter 37 and verse number 8 cease from anger and forsake wrath do not fret it only causes harm cease from anger and forsake wrath beautiful we have to make such decisions and that will help us to deal with our anger problem ecclesiastics chapter 7 and verse 9 do not hasten in your spirit to be angry for anger rest in the bosom of fools so anger and foolishness are related if you wish to overcome your anger problem first of all acknowledge your anger only when you are ready to acknowledge your problem you can receive healing otherwise um, as many people they don't recognize or acknowledge their anger though they have short temper problem though they get angry very easily but they won't accept that they won't acknowledge that if you don't acknowledge your anger problem then there is no solution and secondly live in forgiveness 
ultimately there is only one way to escape the deadly grip of anger when we have been deeply hurt offended or frustrated sooner or later we have to forgive the person we think was at fault so that's the solution make a decision to forgive the other person instead of getting angry with him and thirdly pray if you wish to overcome your anger issues very important start praying also remember to pray for others as in acts chapter 7 and verse number 59 when um, stephen was thrown to death we see in verse number 59 and they stoned stephen as he was calling on god and saying lord jesus receive my spirit then he knelt down and cried out with a loud voice lord do not charge them with this sin and when he had said this he fell asleep beautiful at that time who can forgive and because of that he went to be with the lord with no internal issues like unforgiveness or anger but on the other hand he was willing to forgive and fourthly ask god to help you deal with your emotions anger is an emotion and only when your emotions are healed you can deal with your anger remember when you receive healing in your emotions you can easily deal with your anger problem and fifthly refuse to keep thinking about the offense someone attacked you someone spoke against you that time stop thinking about your offense that is one of the best medicines to overcome your anger there are several signs of inner wounds if you are wounded inside these emotional struggles are a signs of inner wounds like sadness self pity self hatred depression anxiety disorder which includes anxiety fear panic apathy insecurity loneliness unforgiveness unforgiveness is a major sign of inner wounds also envy and jealousy and as today we heard about anger all these inner struggles or emotional struggles are signs of inner wounds and again stress related factors like tensions frustrations uh, such things also speaks to us that we have some inner struggles we have some inner problems inner wounds are there physical sicknesses are also sometimes a sign of inner wounds because Medical science says that most of the sicknesses like 85% of the sicknesses are psychosomatic sicknesses. Those sicknesses are not just the sicknesses of the body but it rooted those sicknesses are rooted in your soul in your mind. Unless and until your mind is not healed you cannot receive a physical healing. in such cases like some of the um, heart problems some people when they go through high blood pressure circulatory diseases asthma asthma is mostly related with uh, mind stomach related sicknesses like stomach aches ulcers and uh, the sicknesses which are related with head like chronic headaches and such sicknesses are signs of 
inner wounds only when your mind is healed only when your soul is healed you can have complete healing on your body medical science says that for example stress disturbs the delicate biochemical balances in the body anxiety leads to loss of proteins and vitamin a c k anxiety leads to loss of proteins and vitamin a c and k very clear example of what is happening in your body because of your inner wounds so it is our responsibility to deal with our soul to have a healing on our body from tomorrow we are going to discuss about the causes of inner wounds so we can easily deal with our inner problems and once you are healed in your mind that will bring great results in your life very important causes of inner wounds and the uh, first and foremost uh, very important cause behind uh, inner problems is generational issues we are the result of our father and mother our soul is formed because of the love of the father and because of the love of the mother so it's a mixture of your father's love and your mother's love or you can say that your soul is a mixture of your father's nature and your mother's nature thus we are related with our father and mother we have no existence on this earth without our father and mother we are here on this earth because a man and a woman was behind our birth on this earth in proverbs chapter 17 and verse number 6 children's children are the crown of old men or grandparents and the glory of the children is their father you see the beautiful relationship between parents and children you are related with your father you are related with your mother not only that this verse says that you are related with your grandfather you are related with your grandmother in that way it will go beyond that you are related with your great grandfather you are related with your great grandmother you have received so much from your four parents your fathers and your mothers take the example of the color of your skin color of your eye take the example of your hair you received it from your parents maybe some of your great great grandfather had a physical problem and now that is appearing on your body so in many ways we are all related with our parents our grandparents our great grandparents that's why generational issue can be a very serious cause or reason behind inner wounds some are born with inner problems which pass on to them from their parents or from their grandparents it is already in their dna or in their rna and we have a solution in christ jesus because all our generational issues are solved on the cross of calvary that is our great hope once we recognize our issues we can easily solve it because jesus paid the price on the cross 
That's why he declared, it is finished. One of the reasons for inner wounds is generational issues or you can call it as generational curses. In Genesis chapter 3, when man fell from the glory of God, God cursed serpent, woman, God cursed Adam and also because of Adam, there came curse on this earth. Genesis chapter 3 and verse number 14. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. When God said this, there came a curse on the animal world, not only on serpent, the whole animal world came under a curse. And again in verse number 16, to the woman, to the woman he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband and he shall rule over you. Oh, very sad things happened after the fall of man from the glory of God. The animal world was cursed. Here we saw the woman came under curse. Then again in verse number 17, then to Adam he said, Because you have heeded the voice of your wife, and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. You see the curse on this earth? Thorns and thistles. 19 to us, in the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. All kind of misery, sorrows, anxieties, worries, sickness, all curses, all the byproducts of curses entered into this world. Because God cursed man, God cursed the woman, God cursed the serpent. And also God cursed the earth. Now the present world is under that curse. The world or this earth is not yet redeemed. Only one group of people are free from generational curses. That is, the people who are in the family of God because of the new covenant. Those who are trusting in Christ Jesus according to the new covenant who entered into the family of God and who became sons of God are free from generational issues. Generational curses cannot touch them if they are grown up to that mature sons of God. No curse can touch them. No curse from the previous generation will touch them. They are totally free from generational curses. I want to tell you in the new covenant, the new testament, those who are trusting in Jesus Christ, those who are called as children of God and who are in the family of God, there is only blessings for you in the new covenant. No curse in the new covenant. You can experience that total freedom if you totally trust 
in Christ Jesus I would like to tell you according to the new testament if you are in the family of god if you are part of the new covenant then there is no curse in the new covenant in galatians chapter 3 and verse number 13 christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law so curse is only in the law law is the reason for curses the law of moses christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law having become a curse for us for it is written cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree jesus became a curse for us curse is only in the law of moses in deuteronomy chapter 28 speaks about curse curses condemnations punishment all such things are in the law but in the new covenant there is no curse there is no condemnation those who are in christ jesus there is no condemnation you are free from condemnation you are free from guilt you are free from curses then what is the reason behind teaching about curses though there is no curses in the new covenant many people who says that they are in the new covenant are bringing curses in them by their works i will explain about that in the coming days today i just want to underline this truth there is no curse in the new covenant it is only available in the law of moses and about the law of moses it is written in romans chapter 10 and verse number 4 for christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes it is written here for christ is the end of the law law came to an end when jesus became a sacrifice on the cross of calvary that's why the veil in the temple was torn into two pieces from top to bottom that was the end of the law the law of moses is not eternal covenant between god and abraham is eternal new covenant which was established by jesus christ on the cross of calvary is eternal but the law of moses is not eternal it came to an end on the cross of calvary when jesus became a sacrifice if you go with me to galatians chapter 3 and verse number 19 what purpose then does